Hey guys, welcome to this Bolt Quick Tip video. My name is John, otherwise known as Megahertz, and today I'm going to show you a simple way to change the color of a game object over time using a function known as a LERP. LERP stands for Linear Interpolation, and it essentially means that it will change an object from one thing to the next over time. You can use a LERP function in several different ways using C Sharp. For example, you could LERP something's position, you could LERP the intensity of light. My hair has LERPed right off the top of my head, thanks to male pattern baldness. Today, though, we're going to look at a LERP function to change the alpha on a game's object sprite using Bolt Visual Scripting. Let's begin. Okay, just really quickly, I want to show you that all I have is a game object called Bat. It has a sprite renderer on it, so it's just got this sprite on it, attack zero. Um, and then I've got uh, an animator, and whenever I press play, basically I've got one idle animation where it just sits there and idles in the air. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this object fade over time. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to go to our bat, and then we're going to add a component. We're going to add a flow machine, and uh, I'm going to set it to embed. And I'm just going to delete the start event because we won't be using that. And under the variable here, I'm going to give it a fade time. And we're going to set it as a float. And I'm just going to set it to, let's say, six seconds. Okay, uh, going over here to our project tab, I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a bolt flow macro. And I'm going to call this macro color lerp. And uh, starting out in this flow macro, I'm going to make it make an input uh, object right here, and then I'm going to give it one control input and three value inputs. So for the control input, I'm going to just say update input, and then on the value inputs, I actually need three things. So I need one. We're going to call it duration. And uh, we're gonna make it a float. It does not have to be set on default value because we're just gonna plug something into it from the outside. Um, we, right here, we need a color one. And down here on type, just type color. And then we're gonna need you to set that one as a default value so that we can set that outside the macro. And then we're gonna need one more. We're gonna call this one color two and we're going to set that also as a color so just type in color hit enter give it a default value uh, then right here we're going to make a timer so type in timer uh, from the update input we're going to take it right down here to toggle the duration is going to get plugged in right here i'm going to drag this down just a little bit from tick i'm going to bring it right up here to color blurp As soon as that's done, we need A, B, and T. So make sure that you have clamped on that. And then from our elapsed uh, tab right here, we're gonna run that right up into the T. The color one is gonna go to the A, color two is gonna go to the B. And then uh, right after that, uh, since we're updating a sprite, we are going to type uh, sprite render and then set color. And then from that, we're going to run the color of the LERP into the sprite renderer. And then just for good measure to ensure that we can use this um, in, let's say, like a chain of commands here, we're going to make an output. And then from that output, I'm just going to type in a flow output. And we're just going to run this right there. OK, going back to our bat, we are going to drag our color LERP on the outside here. And um, basically for this, uh, for this bat, um, I'm just gonna leave this first color as white and fully um, transparent because um, I don't wanna change the color as I start. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag the alpha down on color two. And um, just because I want it to wait just a minute before it starts doing it, I'm gonna set this update as a coroutine and then I'm going to add a unit and I'm going to type in wait. So as soon as that's finished, we're just going to make a wait for seconds. And I'm going to make it wait for two seconds before it goes. Uh, by the way, if you ever use uh, an update event or any kind of trigger event um, and you have a wait delay timer in there, it has to be set as a coroutine or it will not work. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to run that right here. 
and then we should press play. It should wait two seconds before it starts to change the alpha and then it should fade out. So let's see if that works. Oops. Oh, I missed one thing. Sorry, you're gonna have to run the fade time. I knew I was forgetting something, but then this doesn't look right. Fade time right here, and now that should fire over time. So let's, let's give it a second, let's see if that works. All right, knew there was something I was missing. There you go. Okay, and you can use this, uh, you don't just have to use this to change the alpha color, you can change it. Let's say, let's change it to red, from red to blue, or from blue to black, or, or whatever you want here. So let's see if this changes. After two seconds, it should change from its normal color to red and stay that way. All right, now it looks pissed. <laughs> If you haven't done so already, be sure to check out my channel for other useful videos on Bolt Visual Scripting. This has been a public service announcement from your friendly neighborhood megahertz. Skadoosh!